Hello everybody and welcome in the video on temperament. I have just tuned my complete life code as a kind of instruction video. Many of you have asked that. I will put a link here in this video if you would like to check that out. And I was tuning my life code in the Werkmeister 177 temperament, which is the World Temperita Harmonia. I believe very much connected to what was in fashion in the day playing in 24 keys. And of course, Werkmeister is flattening out all the fifths, one twelfth. So you would say equal, equal temperament in a way that all keys sounds equal. And I've told you a lot of times, and when I do that, and of course there's no no math here. It's now I've not calculated the beats. I'm just I've just listened to the intervals. And again, if you want to see the video, and in, in, in the video I've linked, you can see uh, me tuning Wagmeister 17.7, so I'm not going to repeat that here. But you still have differences in keys, and that's interesting to share with you. Um, and important, I think, as well, because if people talk about the uh, diminishing one, all the fifths by one twelfth, they say that's equal temperament. It, 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 it flatten, flattens out all differences between keys, which is, according to me, not an essential part to keep. But this temperament is, in my opinion, not doing that. You have, I have seen some calculations by uh, Willem Kruisbergen, who wrote a fantastic article, an overview of um, important sources related to the temperament focused on Bach. It's online, and we're going to do a project with him as well. But um, he's cal he calculated the differences. If you tune the fifths on ear, you have a kind of absolute, you're narrowing down the fifths in an absolute way, not incorporating or incalculating the differences that you have. Uh, by definition, by going up, you have another, uh, you have faster beats. You should, if you want to have the fifths narrowed or flattened by one twelve in a perfect way, then you should uh, tune it in a proportional way. So taking into account the differences in beat ratio, that's very complicated going up. And then you have a perfect equality. But for instance, um, if I go check the fifths very briefly, It's really difficult to do because now you have four strings sounding. If I would have to check, if I would want to check really secure the fifths, I would have to mute one string again and maybe also have the damping plot uh, back on the sympathetic sounding strings because they are all interfering with that. You would say. Differences in beat are sometimes difficult to hear because of the different sounds that the string give. Well, the clavicord, of course, you can give a little bit more pressure after attacking the notes, so you can adjust the quality of the fifths. Bartolt Fritz, by the way, in 5056 is writing on this as well. This might be... It's just the A that's too low. So let's just adjust this. Only checking this in this way shows how relative it is, and that's something you read a lot in the 18th century. That you have the, the maths and the calculations, or you have the practice, and it's kind of impossible to have perfect uh, to, to, to flatten the fifths perfectly 112 on ears. So it's it's coming close, I guess. But if you play then in C major, which is adding the this one, and then go to C sharp, this feels at least um, sharper. This, this feels feels very sharp. It's okay. This is good. Okay. Okay. 
bit wide. What do you want if you want to have C sharp? <coughs> the same as C, then you have to adjust the thirds and come whatever. So that's my way of looking at Wagmeister, blood template harmonia. All the 12 keys, or <coughs> 24 keys, excuse me, are very well usable. There are no major differences anymore, which I don't think it's necessary to connect the characteristics of the keys to a certain quality of the thirds, but that's of course up to debate and to up for debate and for research, which is interesting. For me, the essential part to going to Wagmeister 177 was not something I discovered by reading, but just by doing in practice, recording the partitas, is having the fifths and the fourths equal as much as possible. Since if you have two voice pieces um, modulating, one time you will have fourths and fifths used as such, so you can have it passing notes coming using those intervals. And in one um, the key, they are perfectly pure and or almost perfectly pure. And the more, of course, you have an unequal temperament and the modulated version. A few bars later, you have a really out of tune fifths, a really fast beating fifths and fourths. So that that was the reason for me to uh, go and look for a more flattened out temperament. And then I came across that article of Kruisbergen was actually displaying the same journey as I had done. Not to prove anything, it's just the way I came to that. And I'm really relaxed and relieved that I now have a tune that I can say, well, they used it in the 18th century and maybe it's really very close to what they wanted to have. Um, but anyway, I can use it and you could say, well, don't bother any way of uh, proving or justifying what you're doing. If you like it, it's okay. Of course, if you are in this hip movement, historically informed performance movement, not to use that name as a kind of fashion group, but, and which I would like to belong, but I really found it fascinating to reconstruct what those composers might have used or what the tendency might have been or the context. Then it's of course nice and relaxing to uh, read that what you came up with just by instinct or by experimenting is actually well documented as a practice that was used at the time. So that is it for today. Um, certainly talking on temperaments more in the future. Also on the Bach, CPE Bach temperament. I don't know if this video will go after or before that in the CPE Bach series because Bach is really detailed in his short paragraph number 14 in what he will, would like to have as a temperament. And we're going to discuss that also in the second episode practically. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful. If this is your first time here on the channel, love to have you subscribe. This is all about music from Bach to Beethoven and beyond and exploring everything around that to research, to performances, researchers and sharing my journey with you. If that inspires you as a musician or as a listener, hit that subscribe button. Maybe also the bell icon next to that, so you stay on top of everything we do. Also with the live streams, great way to interact with you. And then we see each other very soon again. Bye.